What if our galaxy, the Milky Way, is sitting in a giant cosmic void, and that's why the universe looks like it's expanding faster than it should? This is the heart of the Hubble tension, a major mystery in cosmology. Two trusted methods for measuring the universe's expansion give two very different results, and scientists think our location in the universe might be the reason. In this video, we'll explore what the Hubble tension is, what the KBC void has to do with it, and why this could reshape everything we know about the cosmos. Let's dive in. One of the greatest puzzles facing modern cosmology today is the so-called Hubble tension, a stubborn and growing disagreement in the value of the universe's expansion rate. This rate, known as the Hubble constant, H0, is crucial for understanding the age, size, and fate of the cosmos. It acts like a cosmic speedometer, telling us how fast the universe is stretching apart. But strangely, how fast depends on whom, or rather what, you ask. On one side, we have the early universe camp. Measurements from the Planck satellite, which mapped the cosmic microwave background, CMB, the leftover glow from the Big Bang, point to a Hubble constant of about 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec. These measurements are not casual guesses. They're based on the Lambda CDM model, Lambda Coal Dark Matter, our best framework for understanding the cosmos. In this view, the early universe expanded in a very predictable way, and we should see that pattern reflected in today's cosmos. On the other side, there's the late universe camp. This group measures the expansion rate by looking at relatively nearby cosmic markers like Cepheid variable stars and type 1 a supernovae, considered reliable standard candles due to their known brightness. These measurements, pioneered by scientists like Adam Rees and his team, yield a higher value for H0, around 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Crucially, both measurements are extremely precise, but they do not agree. This discrepancy is far beyond what can be chalked up to measurement errors. This cosmic conundrum isn't just a quirk in the data, it challenges our entire model of the universe. If the early universe estimate is correct, we live in a universe with a certain set of physical laws. But if the local measurements are right, then something's missing from our picture. Something fundamental. Perhaps dark energy behaves differently over time. Or maybe new particles or interactions are at play that our current models fail to capture. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence supporting the tension's significance came recently from the James Webb Space Telescope. With its unprecedented resolution, Webb confirmed the local measurements of Cepheid variables, further reinforcing the higher value of H0. This ruled out many previous criticisms that blamed calibration issues or observational limits for the discrepancy. The tension now seems more like a real signal than an observational artifact. The implications are enormous, if we cannot agree on how fast the universe is expanding, we can't accurately determine how old it is. Estimates could shift by hundreds of millions of years. Moreover, the discrepancy could hint at new physics, possibly involving exotic dark energy behavior, modifications to general relativity, or unknown quantum effects from the early universe. Efforts to solve the Hubble tension are more diverse and ambitious than ever. Alternative measurement techniques, such as using gravitational lensing, surface brightness fluctuations, and even gravitational waves, standard sirens, are being deployed to provide independent checks. The coming years could either resolve the tension by revealing hidden errors, or open the door to a major scientific revolution. In the search for an explanation to the Hubble tension, one bold hypothesis has turned the lens inward, not toward the distant cosmos, but toward our own cosmic neighborhood. This idea centers on what's known as the KBC void, a massive underdense region named after astronomers Keenan, Barger, and Cowie. If our galaxy resides within such a super void, it might offer a natural explanation for why local measurements of H0 appear higher than those from the early universe. 
The KBC void is no small hole in space. It's theorized to span roughly 2 billion light years in diameter and have a matter density about 20% lower than average. In simple terms, it's like a vast region of cosmic real estate that's emptier than the surrounding universe. The void theory suggests that this underdensity could skew local measurements by affecting the gravitational dynamics of our region. Light traveling through a less dense area would appear to redshift more, giving the illusion of a faster cosmic expansion rate. This phenomenon is grounded in a general relativity effect known as the integrated sachs wolf effect, which describes how light gains energy when escaping deep gravitational wells or loses energy when moving through voids. In a large underdensity like the KBC void, the gravitational pull is weaker, which can subtly affect the light we observe and the inferred rate of expansion. But there's a catch. The cosmological principle, one of the cornerstones of cosmology, assumes that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on large scales. If we live in a region that is significantly underdense, this assumption might be violated, suggesting that the universe isn't as uniform as we thought. That would shake the foundations of cosmology and demand a serious reevaluation of how we interpret observational data. Evidence supporting the KBC void hypothesis has emerged from galaxy surveys and redshift studies, which show signs of lower than average galaxy density in a vast region encompassing the Milky Way. Yet, this evidence remains circumstantial. Critics argue that the void may not be as deep or wide as required to explain the full extent of the Hubble tension. Others point out that such a structure, if it exists, should have left more prominent imprints on the CMB. Yet those signatures aren't clearly visible. To validate or refute this hypothesis, astronomers are turning to other probes. Observing supernovae outside the KBC void, analyzing galaxy cluster velocities, and conducting deep surveys of the large-scale structure of the universe are just some of the strategies underway. If these observations reveal patterns consistent with the presence of a supervoid, it would not only support this explanation for the Hubble tension, but also redefine our position in the cosmos. Still, the KBC void is not the only structure of interest. Researchers are mapping other voids and superclusters to understand how local cosmic geography might influence our measurements. Some even propose that the universe might be more lumpy than the cosmological principle suggests a conclusion that could lead to a paradigm shift in our understanding of cosmic evolution. The hypothesis of the KBC void, whether ultimately proven or refuted, has already had a profound impact on the field of cosmology. It has inspired a wave of alternative models, prompted new observational missions, and spurred intense debate about how we interpret cosmic data. One such alternative framework gaining traction is the hot dark matter model with sterile neutrinos, NUHDM. This theory modifies the conventional cold dark matter paradigm by including lightweight, slow moving particles like sterile neutrinos. These particles could smooth out small scale structures while enhancing large scale voids. In this model, the presence of the KBC void isn't an anomaly. It's a natural result of the cosmic evolution influenced by neutrino physics. Moreover, observations of bulk flows, coherent motions of galaxies over vast distances, suggest a universe that may be more dynamic and inhomogeneous than previously assumed. These bulk flows often exceed predictions made by the Lambda CDM model. If confirmed, they would lend support to models like NUHDM which anticipate larger motions and non-uniform structures. Other observational efforts are looking into baryon acoustic oscillations, BAO, and gravitational wave events as potential tools for measuring cosmic expansion. For instance, gravitational wave sources, known as standard sirens, provide a new method for calculating H0 independently of light-based measurements. If these new methods converge on one value, they could help settle the debate. At the theoretical level, some scientists are exploring modifications to general relativity. Theories like MOND, modified Newtonian dynamics, or emergent gravity 
propose that our understanding of gravity might need a revision, especially at galactic and intergalactic scales. These models could naturally accommodate anomalies like the Hubble tension and the presence of large-scale voids. There's also an increasing interest in machine learning and AI-assisted simulations. These tools are being used to run massive cosmological simulations that incorporate both standard and alternative physics. By comparing these simulations to actual observations, researchers hope to uncover which models best match reality. Ultimately, the future of resolving the Hubble tension depends on diversifying our observational approaches. Missions like the Nancy Grace, Roman Space Telescope, Euclid, and future gravitational wave observatories promise to provide fresh insights into the universe's expansion history. Meanwhile, collaborations across disciplines between particle physicists, cosmologists, and data scientists are becoming more vital than ever. The stakes are high. Resolving the Hubble tension doesn't just settle a numerical debate. It tells us whether our current understanding of the universe is fundamentally flawed. If something as essential as the universe's expansion rate remains uncertain, it signals that new physics, and possibly a new cosmological model, is on the horizon. Thank you for watching. Stay curious and keep exploring the cosmos. As we look ahead, the fusion of cutting edge telescopes, innovative data analysis, and daring theoretical exploration promises to bring us closer to solving this cosmic mystery. The universe is trying to tell us something, and we're just beginning to understand the message.